Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS on Star Citizen. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game with some comments also. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU. So I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for Nvidia. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So right energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, we're going to go to option graphics. So the first one is your resolution. Just make sure that you're playing native with your monitor. So if you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. If you have a 4K monitor, go, go with 4K. Super important with the window mode. Make sure that you're playing full screen. Uh, borderless and window is causing a lot of stuttering in this game. So super important with this one. For the quality, I don't see any difference between low, medium and high in your FPS. So I recommend to go with high. At very high, I was losing 3% of my FPS. So my recommendation is go with high for this one. Object distance, no difference between low and medium. Again, with FPS, I saw 2%, sometimes 3 uh, with I. So my recommendation is medium if you really need those FPS. If you don't need it, just go with I. Tessellation, no difference between low and I. You can definitely run that at I. If you have something like a GPU 7 years old or more recent, uh, you will not have any issue to, to run tessellation. Planet Volumetric Cloud, this one is huge. If you compare very high to off, you can expect 15% boost in your FPS. So if you really need FPS, go with off. If you just need a little bit more image quality, go with medium. Uh, you can expect an, an improvement of 9% in your FPS. For field of view, really important to understand if you put this one at maximum, you will lose a lot of FPS. So don't go too crazy. Start maybe with 86, something like that. Look at your FPS if you're fine with it. Look at 90 and after that, just go higher and higher, depending on what you want to do. For motion blur, I recommend to deactivate it. I don't like this effect and it will be better for your image visibility. I'm not using VSync. I just, uh, I don't like to add input lag in my game. Uh, you can use also technology like G-Sync or FreeSync if you want to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. Um, if you're struggling, you see a lot of tearing in your image when you're playing a game, uh, you can definitely activate V-Sync. You will add a little bit more input lag. And uh, really important, look at your FPS also. It will uh, unlock your FPS if you have issue with your thermals because you're playing on the laptop or you have a bad thermals on your desktop uh, computer. Don't go too crazy. Uh, you will have some random stuttering because of that. Sharpening is question of preference. I play at 30. I know a lot of people is playing at 100. So just look at this. It doesn't affect your FPS. Uh, if, you if you feel that your game is blurry, just go higher. And if you feel that it's too detailed, just go lower with this one. Chromatic aberration, I recommend to just put this one at zero. Uh, film grain, I deactivate it again for image visibility. And I don't use the session information QR code. Another thing that you can do is open your comment and do some testing. I have a com uh, some comment that I recommend to, to maybe test. Uh, so you can write R underscore SSDO. Uh, S space zero, uh, you will change, um, it will help with your ambient occlusion. So you will lower 
uh, those uh, graphic and you can change also your shader for shadow and water uh, it can help with your fps but definitely do some testing with those uh, if you like it you can change it in the user file in your game so this is pretty much it guys if you have any question about star citizen just comment in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel peace